getting excited. These are finite resources which are hugely important in a whole array of consumer electronics. And therefore, as the world continues to gorge itself on those types of devices, the availability of those becomes a strategic asset to any government or country that has some control over them. Anything that requires a permanent magnet, whether it be your computer hard drive, whether it be the drivetrain in an electric vehicle or the, the turbine basically in a, in a wind turbine, that's based on a permanent magnet. There's laser guidance missile technology, so there's some, definitely some military elements there. Uh, some certain alloys and uh, chemicals and catalysts and uh, all sorts of things. So pretty much it's hard to find any part of modern technology that doesn't use rare earths either directly or indirectly uh, in, in some way. So, so yeah, they're, they're pretty important, but unfortunately, they're not named correctly. They're not rare. Many of them are as abundant in the earth's crust as things like copper or lead. Uh, but the problem being is that when they are making them form mineral deposits, and that can be a bit more difficult, but it's then extracting them out. And there's a growing desire to diversify that supply and you know that's because of geopolitical reasons but also because of security of their supply chain so things like the coronavirus really showed that relying on single suppliers or single supply chain routes can be quite challenging in certain circumstances and having that um, diversity really helps to sort of navigate those supply shocks is first uh, pumped out and put into uh, ponds, which are wheat brine uh, ponds, and as that brine um, moves... The U.S. is actually the second or third largest miner of rare earth oxides. Um, you know, that, that sort of changes year on year but it actually exports most of the material it mines to China to then be processed, to then come back to the US, to then be used in all of these different applications. The challenge is not so much knowing the deposits where they are, it's the energy, the water, the technology especially, and that's where China has invested for a long time um, and can do it much more cheaply than, uh, than the rest of the world. And so hence they've been able to develop uh, their 90% control of uh, refining of, of, of rare earth. got to go out and explore and find those you've got to quantify them you've got to make sure that it's economic to mine them you've got to um, go out and, and find the money to then build the mine um, you've got to train all the, the laborers and workers and do all of the processing To go from a discovery of a mineral deposit all the way through to 
actually mining it, that can take at least 10 years, if not longer, and generally it's longer. Um, and that only gets you to sort of what we would call a concentrate, and that's sort of an intermediate product. You've then got to go and do all of the processing on that to turn it into a metal or something that can be used in a battery or a laptop. You know, we don't need any more supply if we're happy to work with China. It's the geopolitics and that whole situation that is creating this environment where we need investment in supply. You know, if, if the West was happy to work with China, you know, we'd all be fine. <laughs> Jelajahi cara baru mendapatkan informasi. Download Metro TV Extend sekarang.